Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Anwar Youssef Dunbar, and this is Big Discussions 76 Sports. First of all, please like this video, please share it, and please subscribe to my channel. Well, today is September 8th, uh, 2020. Uh, you know, I, I like to open these these um, offerings by saying that, uh, you know, the rock on which I've built my church is Michigan football. Um, that's a line I've uh, I stole from Avengers Age of Ultron. Of course, in that movie, Ultron was talking about the vibranium. And, you know, right now uh, we are waiting uh, a lot of us are eagerly waiting to see whether or not uh, the Big Ten is going to reverse its decision uh, to um, regarding having a 2020 college football season in the presence of uh, this uh, coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and, you know, when I started this channel, um, I assumed that I would have a, a gravy train full of content just on Michigan football. Uh, so we're keeping our fingers crossed um, and hoping that uh, Kevin Warren and at least six out of the, uh, what is it, 12 now? Six, we're hoping that six of the presidents uh, vote to uh, move, uh, move forward with football. And it's rumored that that would start on October uh, I believe it's the 10th or the 11th. In any case, in the meantime, we still have the, uh, the NBA bubble uh, and we have the playoffs. So I'm back with another offering about the uh, NBA bubble. And as most of you know, I've been rooting for the Los Angeles Clippers and uh, hoping that there will be a Western Conference final matchup between them and the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, based upon their two opponents, uh, that's very much in question. Uh, the Lakers are, uh, you know, in a battle with the Houston Rockets. Uh, I believe their game three is tonight. Uh, right now, they're tied 1-1. And uh, the Clippers, the team I've been rooting for, they went up 2-1 uh, on the Denver Nuggets last night and I'm going to focus on that game for this particular offering but before I say that I'm going to give a few thoughts surrounding uh, the NBA and surrounding that game you know as I was watching the matchups over the weekend and I was just focused on the Western Conference so two of my buddies are diehard uh, Laker fans and uh, one is a diehard LeBron fan and the, and the other one is a diehard Laker fan and, uh, you know, we're, we're always going back and forth about the Clippers versus the Lakers. And his thing is, you know, the Lakers run the West and the Lakers are a heritage team and the Lakers have 16 uh, titles and, and vice versa. And as I was watching the games, I was just uh, I'm a, a Gen Xer. So I saw the late 1980s NBA and the, the 1990s NBA. And it's, and it's just amazing how the game has evolved and how. Uh, you know, contact has been legislated out of the game and how scoring has been encouraged. And so over on Facebook, I just made a um, an observational post saying, wow, it seems like every possession in the NBA now is geared towards um, hoisting up three-pointers. And so when I watch those games, what I see is, you know, all of the players are multi-skilled, and very, very talented these days. And as I watch those games, I see the ball moving. I see guys penetrating. I see the ball being kicked out. And I see I see it being passed and passed around looking for an open man for um, usually for an open three-pointer or maybe finding someone close to the basket for a dunk or something to that effect if they don't score off of transition. And that's the way it looked to me. Uh, one Facebook friend, shout out to uh, Lamar Snow. Uh, I'm pretty sure he won't mind me mentioning him. No one knows who that is, but he's one of my Facebook friends. He said, no, he said, 
you know, the NBA is just the, the players are more talented and athletic than they were uh, in the late 80s and 90s. So they're not necessarily always going for three-pointers. Uh, you just haven't watched the NBA as much. So it looks that way to you. I think he's a LeBron guy as well. But, um, you, know, you know, but other people have made that observation. And, you know, they've noticed that it's a much different game than it was in the 80s uh, and the 90s. So it's very, very interesting. You know, the playoffs used to be about uh, contact and uh, there used to be a lot of drama. Now, of course, that depends on how closely you're following a particular team. <clears throat> and it depends on how emotionally attached you are to a particular team. But, um, and we are, uh, these are unusual circumstances now. We're, they're in a bubble. There's no, <clears throat> excuse me, there's no home court per se. You know, it feels more like a basketball camp. Anyone who's been to a basketball camp knows what I'm talking about. You know, there are no fan, there are no fans in a, in a packed arena. You know, there's no home court advantage. Neither team is traveling. So it, it's a very sterile environment. And it's, in my opinion, and in the opinions of others, it's introduced a lot of parity. So whether it's a team is a number one seed or a number seven seed or a number two seed or a number six seed, you really don't know what you're going to get from night to night. And I think we've seen a lot of that in these playoffs. So going back to last night's uh, game three, uh, which um, where the Clippers matched up with the Nuggets, uh, you know, the Clippers came out and won game one decisively. And then the Nuggets came back uh, and won game two. And they did so in large part, uh, you know, one of their players, I think it was Murray, said that uh, after game one or going into game one that they were tired from their series with Utah. But they came back with a vengeance against the Clippers. And I'm thinking... Um, you know they had a they have a lot of shooters, uh, but the player that stands out in my mind is that Nikola Jokic, uh, who people call uh, the Joker. Um, consequently, my my buddy uh, Alim Abdul Gaines, uh, who was a diehard Laker fan, one of the diehard Laker fans that I referred to earlier, uh, all season he's been calling the Clippers the Clown Clips. So that's our running joke. In our little group, um, so I refer to the Clippers as the Clown Clips. But it's it's uh, it's coincidental that Jokic's nickname is the Joker. Um, so last night, and I couldn't. Um, I was watching the game on a Fire Stick and not via cable, so I was I got a very very choppy uh, um, broadcast of the game. So anyone who has a Fire Stick knows that. If it's not a, if the fire stick isn't getting, or if it's, if it's not interpreting a nice, clean broadcast of the game, you, the viewer, you're going to see things. You're going to see the screen freezing. Uh, you know, you're going to miss baskets. Uh, and, you know, the, the fire stick is constantly going to be trying to catch up with the actual broadcast. And in some instances, the fire stick will kick you out. And that's what watching... Uh, last night's game was for me. But I was eager to see if the Clippers were going to rebound from game two and uh, go up 2-1 on the Nuggets. And it was quite a game. Uh, you know, I haven't been watching the Nuggets all season long, uh, but the Nuggets are a force to be reckoned with. They've got shooters all over the place. And particularly uh, Nikola... Jokic, which, which I think, who I think is really, really hurting the Clippers. Nikola Jokic, let's see, he's a center. Uh, let's see, seven feet, uh, 253 pounds, uh, and uh, 25, he's 25 years old, and he's from Serbia. But this kid is multi-talented, man. He, he, you know, can play close to the basket, but he can also step out 
and shoot it, which I think has really, really been hurting the Clippers. And, you know, at the end of that broadcast, um, Doc Rivers, no, not Doc Rivers, the the, the TNT crew, uh, Shaq, Kenny the Jet, um, Charles Barkley, and uh, Ernie, geez, I can't think of his name, or, or maybe it was, geez, I can't think of who the fourth guy was. But anyway, at the end of the game, uh, Kenny the Jet pointed out that when uh, Zubats is in there guarding uh, Jokic, Jokic likes to step out um, and shoot from three-point range more. And when Montrez Harrell is in there guarding Jokic, he likes to post up Montrez Harrell because he's a bigger a bigger guy than Montrez Harrell. And as I was watching the game last night and Jokic was letting it fly from three-point range and early on in the game, I was like, wow, the Clippers are going to fall behind 2-1 and this might be the end of the Clippers. The Nuggets look like they have the Clippers uh, number here. And as I was watching that game unfold and, and Jokic, as I was watching Jokic go off, I was thinking, why doesn't Doc Rivers make an adjustment? Because the, usually the playoffs, whether it's in the NBA or in the NFL, it comes down to a chess match. Uh, it comes down to adjustments, and it comes down to X's and O's. And as a, if I were coaching the Clippers, if I were Doc Rivers, I was sitting and wondering, why doesn't he just tell one of his guys to just glue themselves to Jokic. How does Jokic continuously find himself open um, behind a three-point line? Because he's got very good mechanics. And every time he hoists that ball up, it seems to sail right through the net. So why don't you just glue someone to him, figure out which one of your players can really glue themselves to him in a 80s, 90s, Dennis Rodman, Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen type of way so that he can't get those clean looks at the basket. And then what I also realized is that in NBA playoff basketball, the further you go, the teams get more skilled, and you usually have to decide to give up something. So with Jokic, if I had to choose between him hitting those three-pointers and loosening up the defense for the rest of the Nuggets, who are also very talented and who can also shoot the ball from long range, uh, if I had to choose between Jokic shooting from long range or posting up, I would give up his um, back-to-the-basket post-up game. And I would try to play closer to the Nuggets' other shooters. I think that would hurt uh, the Clippers a lot less than having Jokic out there shooting and then you know, shredding the entire defense. So that's just that's just what I observed and that's what I found myself wondering as I was watching that game so somehow the Clippers uh, miraculously um, battled back they hung close and they wound up um, pulling the game out um, and getting the victory and going up 2-1 so I'm just going to read over the point totals here and I'm going to wrap this up Uh, Kawhi Leonard he bounced back from game two uh, where The Nuggets played that suffocating defense on him. He scored 23 points in 42 minutes. Zubats scored 8 points in 21 minutes. Paul George had a monster game, scoring 32 points in 40 minutes. Uh, Lou Williams uh, scored 10 points in 28 minutes. He made some clutch baskets down the stretch. Montrezl Harrell scored 11 in uh, 22 minutes. And uh, Patrick Beverly scored 7 points in 21 minutes, but... You know, Patrick Beverly's contribution isn't entirely offensive. A lot of it's defensive, and a lot of it is his energy. Now, the Nuggets, looking at their stat line, Jeremy Grant scored 11 points. Uh, Paul Millsap had 11 points. Nikola Jokic had 32 points. Uh, Murray uh, had uh, 14 points. Uh, Gary Harris had uh, 10 points 
and Michael Porter Jr. had 18 points. So the Nuggets had six players in double figures. So the the argument can be made that the Nuggets perhaps could have and should have won that game. And Kenny Smith predicted uh, in the post-game broadcast that these teams are so evenly matched that this series could easily go uh, six games or seven games. So I'm going to stop this here. Uh, I was happy to see the Clippers bounce back. I hope that they're able to pull this out, and I hope that the Lakers are able to pull their series out against the Rockets, and uh, we're able to have our heavyweight fight, uh, the battle for L.A. in the Western Conference Final. Uh, But there are no guarantees. The Rockets are tough, and as we're seeing right now, the, uh, the Nuggets are pretty tough. The Nuggets are solid. Uh, Murray, Murray's first name is Jamal. Uh, and I think, speaking of Murray, I think one of the plays of the game, I think it was him, he tried to drive it in and he tried to flush it with one hand and Kawhi uh, made an athletic play and leapt up and blocked it. Uh, but I thought that that was a significant play in the game. But I'm going to stop this here. Those are my thoughts on the Clippers 113-107 victory over the Nuggets. If you're following the NBA playoffs and the NBA bubble, please let me know what you think in the comment section below. Uh, Please like this video, please share it, and please subscribe to my channel. Go Clippers! And as always, remember uh, that your attitude determines your altitude. Take care, and I'll talk to you the next time. Bye-bye.